thank you very much for inviting me uh, to your conference. It is always a pleasure to be here and particularly to discuss uh, uh, such important issues as uh, health and safety at work. And indeed, uh, my intention is uh, to clarify as much as possible what concerns European strategies for health and safety at work and, in that context, the role of the social partners. And I hope you will get uh, as close as possible answer to the key question which you just uh, uh, mentioned. As you know, the Commission now is finalizing its evaluation of the EU strategy on health and safety at work for 2007 to 12. The results will serve as a basis for a public consultation on a possible new European health and safety strategy. So we should grasp every opportunity to discuss the subject with stakeholders and especially with the social partners. This should help us to identify how we can best address the challenges ahead. But before looking at the challenges, let me first look backwards. The success of our health and safety policy can be measured by the reduction it has brought in the number of fatal and non-fatal accidents at work and in the incidence of work-related illnesses. In 2002, the absolute number of serious non-fatal accidents, which means with more than three working days lost, uh, in the EU 15, equaled around 4.4 million. Since then, a substantial improvement has been achieved, but the number of non-fatal and fatal accidents was still very high in the EU in 2010. The latest Eurostat estimates put them at almost 4,400 fatal and over 3.3 million non-fatal accidents. But those data cover 26 member states only, and they do not cover all accidents. 23 million people in the EU, one in 10 employed persons, report at least one work-related health problem. It is estimated that the overall burden of absenteeism, permanent incapacity, health costs, and so on, amounts to around 2.6 to 3.8% of the EU GDP. Despite the substantial progress in reducing accidents since 2002 that those figures show, a greater effort is needed to improve the situation. And the social partners have a key role to play here. The EU social partners made a full contribution to the EU strategy for 2007 to 12 and delivered outstanding outcomes, for instance, by adopting agreements that will contribute to protecting the health and safety of workers better for example, from silica crystalline dust in industry, injuries caused by sharps in the hospitals and healthcare sector, third party violence in the services sector, occupational risks in the hairdressing sector, and harassment and violence at work in cross industry sectors. Another example of successful cooperation between the EU social partners and the ILO was the adoption of a Council directive implementing the agreement on the 2006 Maritime Labour Convention. This list is far from exhaustive. Health and safety are crucial for workers and employers, given the impact for health and well-being, and consequently for company competitiveness. The social partners are taking up the challenge. Many European social dialogue committees are working to improve occupational health and safety in their own sectors. EU social dialogue has produced around 80 texts on health and safety, ranging from common opinions and codes of conduct to toolkits, frameworks for action, and autonomous agreements. They relate, in particular, to emerging risks, such as work-related stress, harassment, musculoskeletal disorders, exposure to carcinogenics, uh, and fatigue, which are linked to the development of new work organization, management procedures, and technologies. Our Industrial Relations in Europe 2012 report, to be released shortly, will highlight social partner initiatives in the past two years. In such varied sectors as agriculture, construction, and education, 
European social partners are making a real difference in improving health and safety at work for millions of Europeans. One sector that has received much attention lately for its work on health and safety is hairdressing. The European Social Dialogue Committee in the sector has worked for over a decade to reduce work-related risks to health and safety for the benefit of workers and hairdressing businesses. The EU sector of social partners signed a framework agreement in 2012 and asked the Commission to implement it by EU legislation in accordance with the treaty. A similar approach has been followed by the EU social partners in the inland waterway sector, who also expect their agreement to be implemented via either a directive to improve working conditions in their sector. The hairdressing agreement has aroused political controversy, which we regret because we consider that such agreements must be assessed impartially. The Commission will assess the social partners' request and has already commissioned an external cost-benefit study of the hairdresser agreement and of the agreement on working time in the inland waterway sector. It will decide independently on the basis of an impartial assessment and fully respecting the EU social partners' autonomy whether or not to present a proposal for legislation to the Council. Irrespective of any legislation, the Commission strongly supports the sectoral social partners in their efforts to disseminate and implement the measures they have agreed. We have co-financed projects to develop common health and safety standards in many sectors, building on cooperation between the EU social partners and medical experts. We need to emphasize the links between an EU health and safety strategy and European social dialogue which can provide effective, feasible solutions to occupational safety and health problems affecting workers and employees across Europe. In addition to social partner agreements and a substantial body of legislation in the health and safety area, EU strategies for health and safety at work have also provided great impetus. The strategy for the period 2002 to 6 was based on an overall approach to well-being at work which took account of changes in the workplace and the emergence of new risks, particularly those of a psychosocial nature. It gave new impetus to prevention policy at national level, presented coherent, convincing arguments in favor of a partnership to meet shared objectives and obliged the parties concerned to give considerations to achieving them. The strategy's success led to a further strategy for the period 2007 to 12, entitled Improving Quality and Productivity at Work. Ladies and gentlemen, the final evaluation, which the Commission will be publishing in the coming weeks, will show that the strategy has met its goal and has achieved a continuous, sustainable, uniform reduction in accidents at work and occupational disease. According to the indicators, the, strat the strategy has succeeded in its aim of reducing the total incidence of accidents at work across the 27 member states by about 25%. So setting a quantitative target for reducing work accidents seems to have worked. The strategy has raised the visibility of this policy area and encouraged the member states to focus on measures to reduce accidents. It has also helped to improve implementation of safety and health legislation and to clarify and interpret the rules. All member states, except one, now have national strategies or similar instruments and are applying them. In member states where occupational safety and health systems and measures are less comprehensive, the European strategy has helped to generate improvements and bring the systems more closely into line with those in other countries. Many, many actions planned under the strategy have been implemented. Almost all legislation planned has been put forward, and the Commission, the Advisory Committee, and the Senior Labour Inspectors Committee have been active in drafting guidance, exchanging best practice, 
and developing or revising legislation. One practical example of success in improving implementation of legislation by SMEs over the period is the development of the online interactive risk assessment tool. This is a cost-free web-based application developed by the European Agency for Safety and Health at Work. It allows a growing network of partners to develop tailor-made risk assessment tools for micro and small enterprises. The agency also carried out a pan-European awareness raising campaign on risk assessment and safe maintenance between 2007 and 12. The campaign is, un a campaign is currently underway on working together for risk prevention. This campaign emphasizes the importance of leadership by top management and owners working in tandem, along with active worker involvement to improve risk prevention at the workplace. These campaigns have helped raise awareness of the need to improve occupational health and safety and mobilize the actors concerned. The European Social Fund plays a crucial role in supporting member state initiatives to develop a culture of prevention in the field of health and safety at work. In the 2000 to 2006 programming period, 13 member states spent about 5.1 billion euros on health and safety at work related measures, including 2.8 billion euros social fund co-financing. I'm within the framework which we agreed in advance. In the current programming period, 16 member states have used fund financing to improve health and safety at work mostly as part of their efforts to increase the adaptability of workers and enterprises. This highlights the strong competitiveness aspect of health and safety at work. Most measures supported by the fund have focused on three main areas, training and education of workers, self-employed teachers and trainers in health and safety issues, health promotion and prevention of sick leave, and establishing health and safety provisions at work. This has helped bolster the competitiveness of the EU labour force and generate better jobs. But clearly, more investment is needed in healthcare and health and safety at work. The Commission proposal to allocate at least 25% of EU cohesion funding in the 2014-20 to 20 period to the Social Fund for investing in people and employment and social reform serves that goal. The evaluation appears to endorse the value of an EU dimension to uh, policy in this area and uh, confirms the relevance of a strong strategic approach to health and safety work. While implementation of the strategy has been globally effective, there have been gaps in particular in terms of reaching out to individual companies at local level and especially SMEs. So much for the past, ladies and gentlemen, but of course, uh, within the remaining time, I would like to address uh, the question about uh, the future. And let me start by outlining what I see as the foremost justification for an EU occupational safety and health policy today, the fact that it can help us meet the main targets of our Europe 2020 strategy for smart, sustainable and inclusive growth and jobs. That makes occupational safety and health a key factor for growth and for the creation of uh, new and better jobs. First, because the economic cost of work-related accidents and diseases to industry and society generally is enormous. We all have an interest in reducing that cost to a minimum, particularly in an economic and financial crisis, by applying effective preventive policy. The fact is that good health is also good business. Investing more in preventing accidents and disease in the workplace helps improve the firm's economic performance and bolsters the sustainability of the social security system. Uh, second, it is not just a question of reducing cost. Better health and safety also contributes to company performance by improving staff well-being, reducing absenteeism and staff turnover, and bolstering job satisfaction. There is no doubt that a good working environment is a big factor in competitiveness and can play a crucial role in increasing the workforce's potential. 
In particular, staying healthy is vital, given the demands of working life today, with its frequent changes between increasingly demanding <coughs> jobs and new types of work organization. However, there are some key challenges to address. Given the aging of our workforce, effective health and safety policy is a precondition for staying active as we grow older. Clearly, the prospect of a longer working life raises specific issues linked to long-term expectations and the probable emergence of chronic and long latency diseases. Well-adapted health and safety policy is therefore a vital component of labor market policy to promote active aging. We need to take into account the new risks related to emerging technologies and new working arrangements, such as those connected with nanomaterials and the green economy. During the current recession, the capacity of most EU businesses to continue investing in prevention and promoting a safe and healthy work environment may be seriously challenged. We have to offer cost-effective ways of keeping working conditions sound. The data available show that occupational diseases continue to be a significant problem. In particular, musculoskeletal disorders and psychosocial illnesses, such as stress, stand out as major areas of concern. Recent reports also identify the significant burden of occupational cancers, a significant percentage of which are deemed to be preventable with appropriate action. Focusing on better implementation of EU legislation, awareness raising, and the promotion of a culture of prevention is also vital. The data available indicate that implementing health and safety legislation has been and continues to be a challenge in many member states and one that needs to be addressed. SMEs face special challenges. A more closely coordinated approach at EU level will be needed to upgrade the quality of guidance and assistance compliance tools for member states <coughs> and the social partners. As I mentioned in my introduction, when the Commission presents the final evaluation of the strategy, it will also open a three months public consultation to identify these future priorities. We are considering giving priority to tackling health issues and preventing work-related health problems more effectively. These include mental health issues, occupational and work-related diseases, uh, work-related musculoskeletal disorders, and potential risk of new technologies. More effective implementation of EU legislation, in particular in SMEs and especially in micro enterprises. A special effort over the, new, over the next few years to make working life sustainable. In particular, this involves better protection and promotion of health and safety among older workers, facilitating healthy aging at work, and developing a culture of prevention throughout the working life. At a later stage, the Commission will conduct a full evaluation of EU occupational health and safety legislation. The findings, which are expected in 2015, will help to see how its application can be made simpler and more effective, particularly for SMEs. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that people feel that evaluating the 2007 to 12 strategy is a slow uh, process, but I would point out that the European Commission is strongly committed to improving working conditions, and it cannot act alone. We need the commitment and also the support of all the stakeholders, and especially the social partners. The success of our health and safety policy largely depends on how it is implemented and enforced at national and local levels. I look forward to continuing to work together, and I trust that together we can convince people that good health and safety at work policy is crucial to workers' well-being and good also for businesses. I am sorry it was longer than one sentence, uh, but I believe I had to give you a full picture about the thinking of the Commission about uh, this uh, policy area, and I look forward to a few uh, questions to discuss these matters with you. Thank you. Perhaps I start with the first question, uh, and perhaps you can answer shortly, because other people also will have questions. Uh, yesterday, uh, Mr. Ender, and today we heard presentations by experts, by scientists, who all empathize the need for a new strategy 
uh, in the advisory committee, social partners already have asked for a new strategy. So I think we did our job as so social partners. Uh, the European Parliament wants to have one, uh, and here's an audience from sev 27 different EU countries uh, who are asking the same. Um, we also know well the big health and safety issues for the future. Uh, MSDs, cancer at the workplace, social, so social risks, the need for modern legislation, the need for a strong labor inspectorate, the need for independent occupational experts, the need for better workers' representation, all is in fact known. Um, so, uh, in fact, the Commission should be able to formulate a new strategy on the basis of what we have already. Uh, so, uh, is it really not possible to write in a few weeks' time a very good new strategy? Uh, I think it is possible uh, within a few weeks' time, but that few weeks is not uh, at this uh, month or not in the next month. Uh, we believe that it is justified to have a, 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 a proper uh, consultation. Um, it's not uh, a new idea, uh, and uh, I should also uh, like to include uh, myself in the long list uh, which uh, you uh, read out about uh, those who already signaled that it is important to uh, go forward. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, on a number of occasions, I also signaled my, my uh, intention to uh, go to the same direction. Uh, the point is that we uh, need, uh, first of all, um, a, a very systematic work on the focus and the content, and also face uh, the political uh, discussions, which I also pointed to, uh, for example, in the context of the hairdressers uh, uh, sector. Well, the data is, uh, uh, as you probably know very well, is uh, a, a large number of numbers but we have to put everything into context. We have to uh, develop um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the context of a new strategy um, uh, aligned to the Europe 2020. So it's not simply uh, something that uh, uh, you know, pulls together uh, data which uh, is produced by various uh, agencies, but it has to be systematically integrated to uh, what the Commission intends to do in the coming period. And uh, I believe it's, uh, it's, it's a, a very responsible uh, work and, uh, and uh, we should uh, devote uh, the, the consultation to, to uh, this cooperation. Well, I'm sorry to say uh, I uh, gave practically everything about, you know, where we are now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you are asking about how the strategy, which is not yet written, will address the problems which you described. And I hope you understand that it's not possible to uh, explain at this stage. Well, um, I think uh, on the one hand, uh, there is a, a legitimacy to look at existing legislation in order to see uh, whether everything is uh, up to the standards, up to the challenges, up to the, uh, the, the requirements of, uh, of the, not just the current uh, stage where we are, but the next uh, uh, period. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, we insist that um, what uh, uh, has been achieved, uh, should be preserved, and we should build on this um, by reconciling many objectives, uh, objectives of uh, uh, economic uh, growth and progress, and on the other hand, uh, the better safety uh, of uh, the workforce and, and more general social uh, objectives, uh, uh, and also the relations between occupational health and public health uh, should be looked at in many areas, whether it's, for example, tobacco or, uh, or, uh, or, um, or the causes of cancer. Uh, and sometimes it's difficult to separate um, all this. Uh, all in all, uh, the, the pressure, uh, which is not simply for smarter regulation, uh, but very often uh, repatriation of competencies. 
um, should not be underestimated. And very often, therefore, we, uh, we should not simply uh, focus on adding uh, new demands and uh, new proposals, but, but ensure that what we already achieved will not be attacked or, or undermined in, in its functioning. So we have to act at the same time uh, for many purposes and, and many directions. And that's why uh, uh, the, the uh, I think discussion fi also needs to find the right focus uh, where the demands are, are uh, uh, placed. Um, and uh, if you know, we speak about the the, uh, the future cooperation, it should be as concrete as possible, because that gives uh, greater legitimacy, that uh, creates better foundations uh, for, for the future, even if there are certainly voices around uh, for less regulation or, um, or less red tape. Uh, as I pointed to this, uh, not just today, but also on several other occasions, uh, it very much depends on the content. So it's, uh, uh, you know, we need to convince everyone uh, about, about the importance uh, or even the necessity of uh, a, a new strategy. Uh, I am committed uh, to this uh, work, but you probably know very well that it's not in the work program of uh, the Commission for this year. It means that the door is obviously open. Uh, we have to work together uh, through the consultation uh, to deliver uh, the, the right content, and I believe this uh, can succeed. It looks like an easy question, but in reality it's a very complex one. <laughs> Because um, there is a certain rhetoric uh, coming repeatedly, uh, not just from the direction of the UK, but sometimes <coughs> from elsewhere too. But if you look at what is happening on the ground, and in reality, uh, the two are not necessarily consistent. Because from the point of view of implementation, from the point of view of participation in, in uh, uh, in, in, in new legislation, like um, the exposure to electromagnetic fields, uh, the UK is working together uh, with, with other countries, uh, and I would say very constructively. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting political challenge, what you are pointing to, but I wouldn't say that it uh, would uh, in itself uh, uh, define <coughs> sore against um, uh, what will happen with uh, a new strategy. Uh, in, in the coming period. Okay, Mr. Ender, thank you very much for being here. You stayed a little longer, so I suppose you find it very interesting, and we hope next time you stay in l much longer. Uh, thank you for uh, th that you gave us the possibility to ask a few questions also. I think it was uh, 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 very good to have you here for, for a moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, good luck with your next meeting. Cheers.